Part 1. Understanding Relationships Chapter 1. Different Types of Relationships What's Yours? As humans, our lives are full of many different relationships, and, if we are lucky, many different types of love. But love is such a broad and often intangible concept that it is impossible to really define. Throughout our lifetimes, we will likely experience many different types of love, including the unconditional love a parent has for a child and the affectionate love we have for our friends. If we are lucky, we will also experience self-love, often a difficult thing to find. But the focus of this book is romantic love, also known by the ancient Greco-Christian term eros. This is the love shared by two members of a couple, the type of love we are aiming to rekindle, build, or save when we enter couples therapy. But if we look closer at romantic love, we discover that this too can be divided into a number of different facets. To examine this further, let's take a look at the triangular theory of love, a theory put forth by psychologist Robert J. Sternberg of Cornell University. The Triangular Theory of Love Recognizing the kind of love you and your partner share is a crucial first step in understand your relationship and overcoming difficulties you face as a couple. In 1985, Sternberg put forth a theory outlining seven different types of love, entitled The Triangular Theory of Love. This theory proposes that most human relationships contain a mix of three elements. Passion, intimacy, and commitment. While a relationship can exist featuring just one of these elements, more often it is a combination of these three elements that produce the more complex, loving relationships that we as humans actively seek. According to Sternberg's theory, when two of these three elements can combine in different formats, each time producing a different kind of love. For example, intimacy combined with commitment forms companionate love. Passion plus intimacy equals romantic love. And commitment combined with passion equals fascist love. Each of these three love types form one side of the triangular diagram that gives this theory its name. But what happens when all three of these love types are combined? This, according to Sternberg, produces consummate love, which is often seen as the ideal for which all couples strive. A couple sharing consummate love enjoys all three elements, passion, intimacy, and commitment, and the result is a happy, long-lasting, and secure relationship. This consummate love should be the goal for all couples, and it is the goal of this book to help you and your partner reach or rekindle that feeling. The exercises in the coming chapters are all based around improving either passion, intimacy, or commitment, sometimes a combination of two or three, paving the way for an increased sense of connection. The Five Relationship Types While consummate love is an ideal for which many of us strive, the reality is that too few couples are able to achieve this goal. If you have picked up this book, your relationship is likely lacking in one of the three key areas. It can be very useful on your journey toward a happy, loving relationship to identify exactly where your relationship is now. In other words, to identify your starting point the personality traits and underlying issues of both yourself and your partner play an important role in determining what kind of couple you make. You and your partner's propensity for domination or submissiveness, your need for approval, and your typical response to conflict are all elements that determine the type of coupling you produce. While these elements can of course be changed, Knowing your strengths and weaknesses as individuals and as a couple gives you a great starting point for growth and change. 
With that in mind, let's take a look at the five most common types of couplings. Type 1. The active slash passive couple. In this type of coupling, one of the partners is dominant. The person in charge makes the majority of the decisions, while the other partner simply goes with the flow. Most often, this relationship dynamic will have been present from the beginning, with the active partner choosing to adopt a caretaker role. Often, a partner who takes on this role has spent their lifetime pleasing others and taking on responsibilities that are not necessarily their own. In contrast, the passive partner often has a history of anxiety and becomes easily overwhelmed. This type of coupling can also be the result of external situations, such as illness or physical trauma. In such a situation, one partner is forced to step up and become the active partner in the relationship, effectively taking on a caretaker role. While this coupling does not often lead to regular arguments, the active partner can sometimes be prone to resentment and outbursts if they feel as though they do not receive enough gratitude and appreciation for their work. Long-term, active-slash-passive couples risk the active partner becoming resentful and burnt out. Type 2. The Aggressive-slash-Accommodating Couple Just like in the active-slash-passive coupling, this relationship type is also typified by an imbalance of power. In this case, however, the difference comes about not due to one partner taking on a caretaker role, but rather seeking to exert power over the other. In such a coupling, one partner is clearly dominant, with the other actively passively, often out of fear. Such relationships often involve emotional and or physical abuse. Often the aggressive partner in such a coupling will suffer from anger management issues and will often have grown up with an abusive caregiver. They may also suffer from anxiety which manifests itself in a need for control and lack of empathy. Interestingly, the passive partner may also have suffered an abusive childhood, with the difference that they have simply developed a tolerance for such behavior. Often, such partners believe that if they treat their aggressive partner well, they will be rewarded with their partner's sporadic kindness. Aggressive slash accommodating relationships rarely end with the aggressive partner walking away. Rather, these relationships will simply continue unchanged on the passive partner will find the strength to end the coupling. As a result, the aggressive partner will seek to lure them back into the relationship or will find someone else to fulfill the passive role. Type 3. The Competitive Slash Controlling Couple This type of relationship is all about power, but in this case, the couple is in regular conflict in order to determine who is dominant. This type of couple is typified by two strong personalities who constantly challenge each other over who is right or wrong, or whose way is better. This is a tense relationship type in which couples strive constantly to have the last word. People in this relationship type often feel the need to win their battles as a matter of self-esteem and see winning as the be-all, end-all, regardless of how detrimental it may be to the relationship. Competitive-slash-controlling couples often end in divorce or separation, or more optimistically, they develop the ability to mark their own claims on areas in their lives for which they will individually take responsibility. Type 4. The Disconnected Slash Parallel Lives Couple This type of relationship, couples rarely argue, but nor do they rarely connect. To all intents and purposes, they live their own independent lives, as they often have little in common. Often, people in this type of coupling can feel more like housemates than lovers. A disconnected coupling can create a cold home environment, with the relationship feeling stale, despite the partner's courteousness to each other. Usually, this type of relationship develops over a number of years, 
with the initial spark of romance quickly fading. Such couples may have married for the wrong reasons, or come up against insurmountable differences that they chose to push aside rather than face. Conversation can be a struggle in such a relationship, with small talk about topics like the weather or updates on their children's lives being the go-to subjects of conversation. Often, such coupling end when one of both partners decides that life too short to continue in a relationship that is devoid of passion. Alternatively, they may decide to simply settle, rationalizing that what they have is good enough, or they are simply too old or set in their ways to make a change. Type 5. The accepting slash balanced couple. While the four types of relationship above are destructive in their various ways, the following relationship type is seen as the ideal. It is the type of coupling we ought to strive for, and the goal of many who attend couples therapy. In an accepting slash balanced relationship, there is no power struggle, with both partners able to work effectively as a team. They are aware of each other's strengths and weaknesses, and do their best to support each other when they can. Such couples are able to confront any problems they may face in their relationship and do their best to improve the situation when needed. While such couples inevitably have moments of conflict, they are able to work through these in a calm, respectful, and understanding manner. The accepting slash balanced couple is the couple most likely to stay together, working through life's challenges together in a loving way. While many relationships are accepted and balanced from the beginning, couples in any of the other four relationship types are also able to reach this desired state. Through self-analysis and therapy, they can make the necessary changes in order to make their relationship stronger and healthier. Can you see features of your own relationship in any of these five types? Reread each description carefully and as honestly as you can. See if you can identify any of the above behaviors as your own. Remember, being able to identify the type of coupling you are in provides a firm starting point for building and improving your relationship.